Ladies and gentlemen, classical family, it's your boy Giri back with another reaction. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing great. Today we are reacting to a documentary about Max Rega. So a couple of videos ago, a classical member requested a piece by Max Rega, which I actually enjoyed too. And I didn't know anything about the composer. That was also the first piece that I had, you know, listened to by him. So now the member requested that I watch this documentary about, you know, Max Rega. And I think it's interesting because when I started reacting to um, classical music, we used to react to some documentaries about some composers. And yeah, it's, it's definitely something fun because sometimes I also need some change. I can't be reacting to classical music the whole time. Sometimes I need to go deep into the story so if you have some good ass documentaries please let me know down in the comments and i think i should bring it back because it just helps me out and also we learn something new so yeah hope y'all enjoy the reaction there you go The composer Max Rego was a man of many parts. He was a contrapuntal genius, an avant-garde pioneer, and yet also a composer of warm character music redolent of the 19th century. He left a vast and disparate musical legacy that has been difficult to comprehend. Rego was also a man of many troubles. He was nervous and compulsive and died relatively young. He felt he would not receive the attention that he deserved, and indeed he was beset by adverse criticism. But some people have always loved his music, among them the Paul Hindert, who described him as the last giant in music. The Last Giant. Karl Krebs in Der Tag, Berlin, 15. November 1905. Wenn mir ein neues Stück von Reger bevorsteht, kriege ich immer etwas Herzklopfen. Mhm. Denn man weiß nie, was da kommen wird. Bald schreibt er wie ein zulpendes Kind, bald wieder so, dass man meint, die Ausführenden seien irrsinnig geworden und ging darauf aus, sich gegenseitig Possen zu spielen. Looks like music, it sounds like music, it might even taste like music, yet it remains stubbornly not music. A kind of intellectual overthought music of the clever man and largely about nothing. Reger war nicht hörbar, nur lesbar. Ich mm. glaube selbst nicht, dass er Ohren hatte. Ja, ich bezweifle, dass er als Mensch existierte. Reger is a sort of a musical cyclops, a strong, ugly creature bulging with knotty and unshapely muscles, an ogre of composition, a swollen, myopic beetle with thick lips and sullen expression, crouching on an organ bench. Damn. That's Paul Rosenfeld uh, writing in 1920 about Rager. So, before we continue, and I promise I'm not gonna pause it again, um, I feel like, you know, obviously I can't really say, but 
back in the days there were a lot of composers that really got excuse me for my word but shut on because how can you write something about somebody that has a passion for music like you're just talking down on them and you know for me if i love or if i have a passion for music a specific genre and another person is also or another yeah another person also loves this genre then i actually you know accept it and i'm actually grateful because this person is actually contributing to you know this genre like we are both taking it forward so we're not really talking down on them never even to this day it's the same with music that we have nowadays like how some people talk down on other artists i would never understand it like i don't know it's it's weird to me that's that's what i'm trying to say and i don't know if this roosevelt guy was also a composer but maybe we'll find out more but sorry for the pause and yeah let's continue how do we reconcile the rigor that's described in that rather horrible review yeah with the rigor that could compose this pure Schubert and most of the work is transparent and beautifully scored and full of gorgeous melodies uh, to show you the beginning of the third movement which Rager himself considered the most beautiful thing he had written to up until that time works like this symphonic fantasy and fugue for organ opus 57 which is called the inferno and it is indeed it even looks like an inferno uh, just the very opening and so on I mean this is as far as possible from yeah it really is as one can get. And this goes on for 13 minutes of the most torturous, chromatic meanderings and wailings and indeed uh, uh, Dante-esque chromatic struggles. And stretches already the beginning, all known boundaries of tonality. It's so impressive how they can play the organ. Like it's, it's not quite enough to say that Rega wrote beautiful so complicated. music on the one hand and ugly chromatic ravings on the other. The Inferno is certainly avant-garde, but Rega imbued it and all his most difficult music with beauty. But what does it mean to be avant-garde? In my opinion, uh, Rega's organ work was well at the top of the avant-garde at his time, especially during the beginning of his career. Uh, he died in uh, 1916. I think the first atonal piece of Schoenberg is from 1908 or 9, I'm not totally sure. But before, let's say, the symphonic fantasy of 57 of 1901, as far as I know the literature, it is in several senses more modern than the production of Mahler or Strauss at the same time. There is, for example, the first chord of the symphonic fantasy, which in terms of pitch class set of Mr. Alan Ford is identical to the so-called Elektra chord of the Strauss opera Elektra, which has been written a few years later. Etc. And as, well, as for irregularity of rhythm and independence of, of bar lines and uh, this irregularity of accents and uh, absence of uh, traditional metrical scheme, I think that he was really at the top of the avant-garde during, let's say, from 1901 to 1905. I don't know exactly. Mm. Opus 81. 
At his time, Riga was extremely influential. For instance, uh, in the concert series Schoenberg and his friends organized in Vienna, Riga was the most frequently performed composer. But also, for instance, the young Szymanowski was very much influenced by Riga and some of his pieces almost sound like Riga. In Riga's music, modulation is constant. However, he didn't think that that was only a very modern thing. He already found examples for that in Bach's writing. And uh, there is, for instance, this little comment he wrote on the side of a Bach chorale where he wrote, Bach, you should be happy that you are dead already, otherwise critics would criticize your harmonic development. This is the first time I'm seeing a black conductor. Let me know down in the comments what his name is. Is it right to criticize Rega for being either too modern or not modern enough? Some of Rega's music has a polished harmonic sheen like Hollywood film music from the 1950s. Other pieces are barely tonal, but this indefinability can attract people to his music. Mein erster Eindruck von Max Rega hm. geht in meine Studienzeit zurück. Schon damals arbeitete ich zusammen mit meinem Pianisten, dem Herrn Renzikowski, und er hatte irgendwo oh, in einem my. Antiquariat das Lied Mein Traum von Rega gefunden. Und wir haben dann immer den Anfang gespielt, der ganz wunderbar war, und dann haben wir das Ende auch sehr geliebt, und in der Mitte wurde es doch irgendwie sehr kompliziert. Und dann haben wir uns gefragt, sind eigentlich alle Regerlieder so, die sowieso keiner sang? Und wir haben uns dann angefangen, damit zu beschäftigen. Und nach und nach wuchs unser Staunen und unsere Begeisterung dafür. Ich habe als Schülerin im Bonner Bachchor den Einsiedler gesungen und habe während der Proben nichts verstanden. Mhm. Und mein großes Aha-Erlebnis war bei der ersten Hauptprobe, als alle Stimmen mit dem Orchester zusammenkamen, da merkte ich, das ist ein grandioses Werk. Love to hear it. That's so beautiful. I was very fortunate to have as my teacher and mentor Brian Runnett, organist at Norwich Cathedral, until his untimely death at the age of 35 in 1970. In fact, he was one of the first British organists to really champion the works of Rega. The day before he died, he played the Variations on Fugue on an original theme, Opus 73, at Westminster Abbey, and I turned pages for him. From that time onwards, I really felt it was my destiny to play the works of Max Rega as much as I could, and that's what I've done all my life. Themes of destiny and early death are appropriate in this film. Rega made great demands of himself. He worked himself to the limit, both composing and performing, mm. and he drank, chain-smoked cigars, and ate compulsively. In some respects, his life was a one-way ticket to the hyper-romantic Isle of the Dead, and there aren't that many artists who will take you on such an intense journey. So intense.
So this is a, a completely manic life. And, and Rager felt that he was not uh, going to live very long. He was often talking about uh, Mozart and Mendelssohn, Chopin and others who died so young. And he said, we don't have much time. Rega lived at a time when the arts and society were exploding with different influences and perspectives. No wonder much of his greatest work is in the form of variations, different ways of seeing the same thing. He went over seemingly the same ground again and again, and yet he never repeated himself and always found a new vantage point. So here we're standing in front of printed editions of Rager's music, piano music, orchestral music, organ music, by opus number. And there are many uh, multiple editions here, as well as piano arrangements of orchestral works and so on. But look at this. This is really quite something. And then mm. here, these are facsimile copies of the original autographs of Rager and by no means complete. There are many, many opuses which are missing. But when you look at this, you get an idea of the unbelievable, staggering creativity that this man had. And that does not even take in the fact that he uh, would often give up to 150 concerts or so a year, which would be enough Whoa. for just a performing musician that's on the limit, forget the composing, and the hundreds of students that he also had. 150 concerts a year? That's like 13 concerts a month. Like almost 13 concerts a month. Like 12 months? Whoa. That's crazy. That that hard work, I don't even, I don't even want to call it hard work because it's it's overworking yourself but the dedication that's that's the right word dedication is definitely there but yes hard work too but at the same time it's just overworking yourself but wow sorry for pausing but i just had to say something about that By the time of his death, at the age of just 43, Rega had written a thousand distinct compositions in a limitless range of styles and in every genre except opera. He had given thousands of concerts all over Germany and from London to St. Petersburg, and he had made a fortune from the publication and performance of his music. But his fame has not lasted, and most audiences know little about him. Yeah, that's... It is often questioned whether Rega was a great composer. I think um, when looking at him more intimately, one soon realizes that his technical abilities, not only, but also his musical achievements are so widespread that uh, he really can be called a great composer. The problem is he wrote on such a huge scale uh, from the tiniest little piece for violin solo until the hugest orchestra vocal orchestral score uh, that virtually nobody knows m really very much of his music mm. Sounds beautiful. In this film, I aim to put that right by revealing the vast extent of Rega's music. I aim to establish that yes, Rega was a great composer whose music we must revive and cherish, and perhaps even to come back to that quote from Hindemith that in music he was indeed the last giant.
Wow. Hey, let's give him a clap for this documentary. I think it was pretty interesting. Clap, clap, clap. Very interesting documentary. You know, um, it's it's kind of crazy to me how, and they also said it, how somebody that composed over a thousand pieces, so has over a thousand works, and he was given 150 concerts a year. But, like, it's, it's very less known than other, other huge composers or other composers that did way less. So it's, it's very interesting, and that even lets you know there. You know, um, I wouldn't even say hype, but maybe just that discover... How do you say it? Discoverability? I don't know if that's a word, but please let me know down in the comments. But even back in the days, that was a thing because like just compare it to nowadays, there are so many artists that are so talented, like they deserve to get the hype, you know, around their music, around their work. And they just deserve this attention, but they work so, so many years and they never get it. And then somebody new comes along. Within a year, they gain 10 times that amount of attention and um, also fame and whatever comes with it. And they're doing the same thing that, you know, this other artist has been doing for like five to 10 years. So, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting, you know, knowing that this this type of stuff was also a thing back in the day. But also I respect his hard work and dedication and passion, you know, towards his his craft because um i don't know a lot of people that would have continued to do what they do even after receiving such criticism like people talking about you like that and he just continued to do his thing and they said he made a you know he made he made a fortune of that so definitely um he was rewarded for it but um i think for a composer like that that has a lot of passion they don't care about the money. That's the thing. And that's one thing that I love about such composers. They don't care about the fame. They don't care. Not they don't care about the fame. They don't care about the fortune that comes with it. I think even fame is the wrong word. They just want people to listen to their work. They just want people to, you know, get familiar with what they, with what they create. So, yeah, they just want people to discover them. That's, that's the thing. And and I think that's why, you know, he just kept working and working. But yeah, also shout out to the person or the people that made this documentary possible because it's important to know something about uh, specific composers, you know, composers that are less known. And I think everybody that watches this reaction will also agree with me that it's, it's always important to learn something new about, you know, um, less known composers and also just appreciate and be grateful what they did for the genre so yeah definitely shout out to the classical member that requested this too and please let me know down in the comments what y'all think about this documentary like did you know about this composer before this video what is your favorite piece by him maybe you have um a specific memory that you have of him please share that down in the comments and also if you have like more interesting documentaries for me to watch i really really enjoyed this so please also recommend them down in the comments or even the discord i think i'll open a channel for like documentaries and maybe i can post it in and and i'll definitely try and react to some but yeah thank you all for watching the video if you enjoyed it please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe let's go fam it's been your boy giddy i'm gonna catch you in the next video